So one of the names of the Prophet وسلم, that I'm going to meditate or contemplate upon today is his name Ghaythun. And Ghayth fundamentally means rain. But the root of the word, as we get words like Ghiathun is another name of the Prophet وسلم, or Ghawthun and Ghaythun, they all come from the same root. Ay, Ghayn, Wow and Ta. Is it, it comes from a, a, uh, an essential meaning of aid. And it's also one of the names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives for rain in the Quran. And so there are many words for rain in the Quran. We have matar. But matar in the Quran specifically is linked to rain that's uh, a form of punishment upon the people. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about rain that's beneficial, He uses the word ghaith, I aid, succor, or some support. When someone's in distress, it comes to them. And then other words that are given is ma, water. And then rahma, compassion and mercy. And then rizq, sustenance and provision. And one of the unique qualities of the Qur'an among all the scriptures is its focus upon nature. When we look at other uh, religious scriptures, such as the Bible, there is very little emphasis and focus upon contemplating the environment around us, the nature that, that we see around us. But the Qur'an specifically focuses on this and we're going to see my focus tonight is how the Prophet ﷺ used nature specifically rain in order to bring us into direct connection with, the, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enable us to experience him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ash-Shura verses 25 to 28 وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَقَبُلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ And he is the one who accepts repentance or what I like to translate tawbah as reorientation from his servants and here he's speaking about his specific special servants so when he's those beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who, are, who have a, a relationship with Allah when they veer away from the path he's there in order to accept their tawbah and grammatically it's very interesting he uses the preposition an instead of min min means from in Arabic and an is used here to say as if they're cut off because the meaning of an is mujawaza which means you're split off you're cut off from something and it also alludes to the next part that Allah is going to say in this verse where the preposition an is, is used well, it's assumed to be used, where he says, well, So he accepts your reorientation towards him. But not only that, when you turn, reorient yourself back to him, he will accept it and then he will cut you off. He will make afu. Afu here it means, means separation, severing, which, which leads to growth. So as if you're cutting something, you're pruning it of the things that are not useful so that it can grow further. And he pardons the shameful deeds that we do. So this is his relationship with us. If we choose to have a direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's there for us to accept our tawbah and pardon us from our shameful deeds. And he knows what you're up to. This is, that's my sort of layman's translation because it, 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 look, notice how interestingly he says and he knows what you do in another narration he knows what, you do, uh, what they do so it flips, he says he accepts the repentance from his servants notice third person, they his servants and he forgives them and it, oh, their, their shortcomings and he knows what you do and he flips it to second person to say you directly if you have this relationship where you have this constant back and forth of moving, veering away, coming back, veering away. He'll be there, he know. But be mindful. I don't don't take it for granted as well. Then look how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala moves in next. 
And he answers those who believe, who are staunch in their belief and, and, and are firm in carrying out righteous deeds. So then he moves Tawbah, trying to rid ourselves of those di our, our, our sin sins with Dua. And he answers. And in that is that we make dua so he can answer us. Through dua but also through righteous deeds. And sorry, through belief and righteous deeds. Then he says, And he will increase them from his grace. So there's going to be something extra there. Will kafiruna lahum adabun shadeed. As for the disbelievers, those who cover up, this is a very beautiful play here because Allah is going to lead on to a next theme here. What is this fadl that Allah means, this extra thing that he gives out from his... Some of the scholars mentioned it's the shafa'ah, the intercession. But it leads into this next verse. Then he says with a noun sentence here, well, kafirun, those who cover things up and they don't wish to face the reality of the situation. Lahum adabun shadeed. For them is a intense painful punishment so that's the the transcendent that's that's the spiritual reality of things our relationship with Allah then he moves so a question begs there why do we have to go through all this why do we have to go through this toll bar and why do we have to go through this why can't we just have it good why can't we just why Allah why can't you just make things easy and we just do good deeds and we've got a continual perpetual relationship with you so Allah then answers that question. But if Allah were to spread out provision for his servants, again, those specific servants, those special servants to him, what would be the situation? They would go to excess in the earth. If we just had it good all the time, and this happens to every civilization, when, they, when it gets easy, what happens? They, they slacken and then they they, 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 they go into excess and then their society basically goes into depravity and then another lot come along and take them over. And here some of the scholars said rizq here is rain. I.e. that provision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to provide for people, if you were to give it continually, they would go to excess in the earth. We can take here as well the rizq being spiritual sustenance. If Allah was to give you continual like openings and spiritual connection you'll go to excess in the body it would lead to actually depravity and it would lead to excess in the earth the if the if the Allah's spiritual sustenance became too much for the people they would completely go astray even physically walakin then Allah says but this is how Allah works yunazzilu bi qadrin ma yasha he brings down bit by bit in with a portion a measure in which he wishes. Why? Because he verily is again with his servants. Khabirun Basir. He knows your inward, he knows the inner realities of us, and he sees Basir and he sees the outward, the open, the clear. And this brings us on to the verse that I really wanted to focus on here. So notice he uses, he talks about our spiritual relationship with him. Then he says what would happen if he were just basically to give you things spiritually without any striving, without any disconnection. And if he was to give you your risk, even your material sustenance, just like that, he wouldn't. But it's this back and forth. This is the relationship that Allah wants us to go with the rhythm of the universe. This back and forth. Notice we experience that in our prayers. Look at, look at Maghrib now. 4.30 and it's constantly shifting because Allah wants to be in a dynamic relationship with us. He doesn't want it to be a constant for us where we're just, oh, it's, Maghrib's always at 7 o'clock and Isha's always at 9 o'clock. He wants to say, can you flow with the rhythm? And he is the one who brings down continually or with emphasis the, this, this succor, this aid. Min ba'di, right after what happened? Qanatu. They went into their deepest despair. They said, Allah's not going to provide for us. So on a material point, you can imagine it, the Arabs, 
One of the wisdoms they say about this verse is the Arabs, when it rained for them and they were provided for, it gave them strength and then they just started raiding everybody, one another. So Allah would hold back the rain from them back and forth so they weren't able to get too much strength so they could oppress the other tribes well, among themselves. And so this Ghaith, they're just about to despair and think it's all over and then Allah brings it down to show who's the Lord and who is the servant. To say who's in control here. So, you rem so then you open up to his mercy. You realize your actions don't mean anything. وَيَنْشُرُ رَحْمَتَهُ and, then, and he spreads out like marbles going out all over the place. His mercy, again his mercy and compassion here meaning He's with the rain. وَهُوَ الْوَلِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ And he is your, he's the true guardian, the wali. The wali is someone who's got your back and he's taking care of your affairs. Hamid, And he is the one who's to be praised for that. Because what happens when it rains? We often we praise the elements, don't we? We get fixated and caught in the elements and we forget who the one we're supposed to be praising for it. Or we might praise ourselves and think that this has come because of something we've done. So, rain was something very real for the Arabs. In England, I don't think we appreciate rain as much as the Arabs did. But how would the Prophet ﷺ teach through rain how to live a religious direct experience? It's narrated in the, in the hadith of Muslim and Bukhari that when it rained, the Prophet ﷺ would purposely either take off a garment so his skin was exposed or he would roll up his sleeves so his arms were exposed and, so he, could, he, and he would go out and stand in the rain when it started raining in order for him to feel the physiological contact of that rain and then what would he say to the people? إِنَّهُ حَدِيثُ عَهْدٍ بِرَبِّهِ He said this rain is just comes directly from its Lord. To know this direct contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's come down from the heavens, but it's also been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the famous hadith when the, when the Prophet ﷺ was on the, the minbar, he was, he was on the pulpit delivering the Friday prayer, and then a Bedouin came complaining it's not been raining. And so the Prophet ﷺ lifted up his hands, and he, the dua, dua was answered, rain came immediately. To show, it's as if Allah, there we see Allah working, don't we? Directly. So he wanted us to feel that direct, that almost Allah's action, that direct action, and feel it physiologically on our skin, to feel that we're in contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, 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 the awliya, they, would, they gave allusions to this. They said, this is what direct experience with Allah is. So Abu Madian radiallahu anhu, he said, Stop, stop giving me quotes from so-and-so. We don't want to eat dried meat. Come on, bring me some fresh meat. The giver, the giver has not died. He's, he is nearer than our own jugular vein. And he gave the likeness of how the Prophet ﷺ used to demonstrate this by the rain it coming down on him ﷺ. Then once the Prophet ﷺ when they were in the year of Hudaybiyah, the treaty of Hudaybiyah, the, the, the Sahaba had just finished Fajr and it was raining. And the Prophet ﷺ finished the Fajr prayer, he turned round to them, he said, some of you have woken up this morning, a believer in Allah, and some of you a disbeliever. And he doesn't mean literally, he means directly believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and someone's not with it basically. They, 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 they've covered up the, the reality of the situation. What is it? He said, Whoever said when it rained, مُطِرْنَا بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَرَحْمَتِهِ Whoever said it's rained by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy, there's a believer. Whoever said, oh, it's because of the planets, the, interrelational, the interrelationships between the planets that have caused this. He says he's a disbeliever. I, he's, what's that mean? He's caught up in all the cause and effect and he doesn't see the agent behind all of this. And so it's very important that when we're almost like, for example, a common example is we take the medication, we feel better. Wow, feel that direct experience with Allah. Not with, oh, it must have, you know, <laughs> my body must have just reacted to it well and the camera and da 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 da. No, 
feel the direct experience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making a difference in your system. That's what the Prophet was calling to, this direct experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the movements of the creation. So, and the Prophet was also aware that when it rained, that rain can bring destruction. And we've seen that when people's houses destroyed in Yorkshire, haven't we? When the, we had the floods and so forth, that rain can bring destruction and it can bring benefit. So he used to make the dua, Sayyiban, la, uh, sorry, Sayyiban Nafi'an. Sayyiban means it's coming down from the clouds, water from the, the clouds, and may it be beneficial. So basically, beneficial rain. That when we see it, feel that rain come, when we see the rain coming down, that we we ask Allah to bring benefit in it because it can also bring about our destruction like it brought down destruction upon the people before. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Thintani, two things. Sorry, that won't be rejected. What are those two things? A dua in the nida, making prayer at the adhan, the call. al-matar and making dua with the river underneath the rain. So another sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is that when it's raining, we go out and we stand in it and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another place where prayer is answered. And some of the scholars said that even if you're not going to do that, the very least is you can open up your window, roll, up your, roll back your sleeve and at least get some of it. And to, this is, look how the Prophet ﷺ demonstrated an, a, a direct experience with Allah and how we can teach that to our children and our families. It's like this is Allah sending down the gift for us so they can feel a direct relationship. I often say theology isn't going to drive the, you know, I'm not dismissing theology, but it's not going to drive the point home like you sitting in a planetarium or doing, going out in the stars and saying, wow, and having a direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think this is one of the most beautiful things the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa demonstrated, is him going into nature and connecting it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life. And to, so, and to end, how the Prophet like, likened his ummah to rain. He said, Methalu ummati, he said, the likeness of my ummah is like rain. You don't know which one's of, great, of, of benefit. Is it the beginning or is it the last? So this idea that, oh, the people of the past, they were the greatest. Yes, in terms of their status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their being closer to the Prophet no doubt. And they, we will never achieve that rain. But but the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to practice at the most difficult of times the, the reward that we're getting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizing that the Prophet said to the Sahaba, you are in a time when if you just let a little bit sleep, you, uh, slip, you'll be destroyed. But there will be a time when people are even just able to act on just a tenth of what I've brought. They will be beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to put things into a context to know that there's good throughout all of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, from the beginning to the end and we're like this continuous rain that we don't know will the beginning of it bring benefit or is it going to be the end of it that will be benefit. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll be amongst those who are able to bring benefit to ourselves and to our communities and to this time that we're in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed us in and be able to have connect to Allah interacting with us in our lives and waken, well, awaken our eyes to seeing this and, and, and feel a direct experience with him subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanakallahu bihamdik